Okay, let's listen to the verse number 37. O you who believe, what is wrong with you that when it is said to you, come out in the way of Allah, you turn heavy and cling to the ground? Have you become happy with the worldly life instead of the hereafter? So, remember that, the enjoyment of the worldly life is but trivial in comparison with the hereafter. In so verse number 37, let me explain it actually. I should have stopped at 38 before it going on, but let's go on now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Nasi, the postponement of month. What is postponement of month? Is that they would change the month this was a for, for, forbidden month. This is in continuation of explanation of that. That what Mushrik used to do is they used to play games here. When they wanted to continue fighting, they would say, oh, this Muharram, we will move it next month. And they will make two Muharram or two Zulqadah or two Zulhajjah. And all these things they used to do or, or move it in the month of another month. Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, do not change the time. We're like January should be January, February should be February, March should be March. Do not make February as April and swap with them or make two Aprils instead of one uh, April. So this was Nasi. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade them what they used to do it during this time when they would agree upon. When Allah made sacred, a month is sacred. You don't change it, sacredness of it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, إِنَّمَا النَّسِيُ زِيَادَةٌ فِي الْكُفْرِ وَيَدُلُّ بِهِ الَّذِينَ كَفُرُوا وَيُحَلُّونَهُ عَامًا وَيُحَرِّمُونَهُ عَامًا So one year they will make it halal for this month to be the sacred month. Then next year they will move it forward and backward. So what did they used to do this thing? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, لِيُوَاطِعُوا عِدَّةٌ مَا حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ فَيُحَلُّ مَا حَرَّمَ الله so they did evil thing what they did. So Allah does not uh, guide those who are nation of disbelief and denial. Now next verse is 38 is talking about the uh, expedition of Tabuk. Uh, what we'll call Ghazwa. Ghazwa is according to scholar described where prophet participated. So this is called Ghazwa. It's an Arabic term of Ghazwa where, in which Prophet was with the companion. Without Prophet participating in it, it is called as uh, um, Surya. Uh, so anyhow, so let's let uh, this thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to the believers that Ya ayyuhu lazina amanu, O you who believe, what's wrong with you? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said to you, come out in the way of Allah, when messenger call you to fight for the cause of Allah, why? This was a very particular incident, that's why I will go a little bit detail about it. You turn heavy and clinging onto the ground. Have you become happy that worldly life is better for you? So this is an incident which happened is that when uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi learned the king Heraclius or Hercul, or the, it was the Roman emperor with their seat was in Alexandria. You know, Christianity was divided that Eastern, Western Orthodox, and there was a one capital in Constantinople. So there was multiple division because it was big, huge Roman Empire. They could not manage it to being in one place, which is known as Rome, but the capital was not in Rome. One was in Constantinople, which is in Turkey now, which is Constantinople, uh, Constantinia in Arabic. And the other one was in Alexandria because they were broken. And then there was a Russian Orthodox 
Orthodox and there was different so there were different denominations broke away and each was running independent of others because it was too huge to manage for the Christian and for the Roman so here's what happened is that the King Heraclius who was the Emperor of uh, Rome and it was the main seat of all of them he was sitting in Alexandria and there what he did is he uh, thought to attack Muslims so when he came to the border of Tabuk Tabuk is a name of a well which was located in the northwest which is towards Jordan and the border with the uh, which is Palestine which is Israel today so that area it was being um, uh, the, the army was massing up for the Roman so Prophet also when he learned about it he commanded all of them to come and this was the Jeshul Osra this is the army of hardship because in those days where certain situation happened, there was a famine going on. After famine, the, uh, the Arabs were really deprived of food and jobs and economic situation was hard. And their crops were ready to be ripe and, you know, cutting of the crop. So some of the farmers who thought that, okay, this is a very difficult situation. And they thought that if you're going against Roman army, which is so huge, there's a very unlikely chance you'll come home and you'll get any booty out of this war. So they were hypocrites, they were believer, and they were believer who were just lazy, and they were believers, or they were not believers among them. So also, they were non believing, they're non Muslim. So there was a Muslim, there was a hypocrite, and there was a lazy Muslim. So those who responded to the call were believers. Those who were lazy, they thought that my crop is here, my uh, things are ready, and I, I just do not want to lose the opportunity because last year was bad for the harvest and whatnot. And then there were people who just thought that oh, there's no chance of making it. And the third was a hypocrite. These hypocrites were coming with the lame excuses of the Prophet And that has been mentioned in the history. Uh, so this is, uh, they came and they said, oh, uh, I heard about that uh, the Roman women are very beautiful and the women are my weakness and if we fought and I might lose my faith for them. So please pardon me. They came to Prophet and asked for that. So these are the details which happened with them. So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, oh, you believe, what is with you when you're called to go to the fight? Why are you not going? And those excuses are not at all accepted. And you think the worldly life is better for you than hereafter? Because this is the ultimate thing in Islam that believe that life hereafter is more important than anything in the world. Why? Because there's no matter how rich and how powerful and how celebrated we are in this world, how much treasure we uh, hoard or collect, it's all going to be left behind. But the eternal health uh, or, uh, or the life will be in hereafter. Uh, let's listen to the verse number 39. إلا تنفروا يعذبكم عذابا أليما ويستبدل قوما غيركم ولا تضروه شيئا والله على كل شيء قدير. If you do not march forth in the way of Allah. He will chastise you with a painful punishment and will replace you with another nation. And you can do him no harm at all. Allah is powerful to do anything. <laughs> إذ أخرجه الذين كفروا ثاني اثنين إذ هما في الغار إذ يقول لصاحبه لا تحزن إن الله معنا فأنزل الله سكينته عليه وأيده بجنود لم تروها وجعل كلمة الذين كفروا السفلى وكلمة الله هي العليا والله عزيز حكيم. If you do not help him, it makes no difference to the Prophet because Allah has already helped him when the disbelievers expelled him, and he was the second of the two, when they were in the cave, and he was saying to his companion, Do not grieve. Allah is surely with us. So, Allah caused his tranquility to descend on him, and supported him with troops that you did not see, and rendered the word of the disbelievers humiliated. And the word of Allah is the uppermost. Allah is mighty, wise, 
March 4th, in the way of Allah, no matter whether you are light or heavy, and carry out jihad, struggle, in the way of Allah, with your wealth and lives. That is good for you, if you were to realize. لو كان عرضا قريبا وسفرا قاصدا لاتبعوك ولكن بعدت عليهم الشقة وسيحلفون بالله لو استطعنا لخرجنا معكم يهلكون أنفسهم had it been again at hand or an average journey, they would have certainly followed you, but the distance seems too far to them. They will swear by Allah, we would have certainly set out with you, if we were able to. They are putting themselves to ruin. Allah knows that they are liars. So these three, four verses have again every lot of details, subhanAllah. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that uh, in the verse of the 39, uh, if you did not tenfiru, means if you did not march, Allah will punish you and will change you from another nation. So you will be replaced by another nation if you don't fight in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The verse number 37, which is start with the إِنَّمَا نَسِيَ زِيَادَةً فِي الْكُفْرِ يَدِلُّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا يَهَلُّنُ وَعَمَرُ We discussed about that. And then the verse number 38, which I mentioned, those who have, uh, those who believe, uh, when Allah says march in the battle, march means as an army, go and fight in the path of Allah. So what holds you? Do you live this worldly life more than the hereafter? And if you do not march, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change you or if you do not fight in the cause of Allah and that is the call for jihad when Prophet says go for jihad you should do that. إِلَّا تَنْسِرُوا قَدْ نَصَرَ اللَّهُ إِذَا أَخْرَجَهُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَانِ His name is Huma fil Qari. See Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that you think Allah will not help you. You could imagine that the Prophet sallallahu when he emigrated from Mecca to Medina and this is the mention of Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala and his honor that he took it and took him with him and he was his companion in the ghar and he said to him Abu Bakr when he thought that they will track them down and when one of the uh, one of the Meccan he came right above the ghar sur the cave of sur where they were hiding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded a, a pigeon to lay egg there and, and, uh, and a spider made a web there and they were saved from that they thought that who could enter in this place when this thing happened even though the spider web could be made very quickly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them deceived by that even if he had looked down he would have seen them they are hiding in the cave Allah made them not to be able to find them so Allah says when I could save you from that how come I not save you in the battlefield and give you success so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling if you do not do the struggle in the path of Allah Allah will replace you with the better people who will be willing to do so so that uh, and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also saying that the Prophet do not be grieved uh, and when they were two in the cave, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Prophet in honor of Abu Bakr. He said to his companion that, what do you think, O oh, Abu Bakr? If between you and I, the third is Allah, then who should we fear for? So Prophet feared nothing but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is verse number 41, is commanding, infru khifafan aw siqaran wa jahid wa amwalikum wa anfasikum. So march in the path of Allah, no matter whether you are light or you are heavy, means you have a or support or not, you should fight and carry out jihad, struggle in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with the wealth and with your life. So whatever we can do. So, you know, women are not allowed or they are not required to fight in the battlefield. So they can give their money for those people who are doing for the jihad and, and, and uh, help them. Uh, also, لَوْكَانَ عَارْدًا قَرِيبًا سَفْرًا Now these were the people who were basically thinking that if it was a shorter distance because it was 20 days journey, it was called jaish usra means uh, army of hardship. And there was a lot of details in different places in the Quran mentioned. Uh, just, to, uh, just to show this detail about it, then Usman bin Affan ta'ala offered 1,000 camel all the gold he had and all the weapons and, and the support and, and all the logistics and food, uh, he gave so much money to Prophet that Prophet said, Osman, you have earned 
or purchased paradise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Bakr ta brought everything of his house and Umar ta brought half of his house belonging and that day he thought that today I will, I will defeat Abu Bakr uh, by bringing half of my wealth and he was surprised that Abu Bakr brought everything in his house and Prophet asked Abu Bakr, oh, what have you left home? He said, only Allah and, and his Prophet's name. So you see, so this is how the dedicated devoted they were in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not that today's Muslim are not devoted and not ready to sacrifice. The problem is we lack leadership. And that's where we will discuss some other time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that uh, had it been uh, gained on one hand in ever, on an average journey, some of them thought if it was a so short a distance travel, we would have joined them if it was not the crop is standing. And some of them thought that, okay, we'll be going away from our family, our children. All these excuses they came up with, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept none of the excuses. And some of the believers did that, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished them, and which we'll discuss in the later uh, time we'll stop here today inshallah next sunday we will meet again and we'll continue with the verse number 43 it's a very detailed discussion if you have any question we can ask inshallah otherwise we'll meet next sunday